regular viewer of my channel. You will know that my colleague in America, Ron, and I are obsessed, I think is the word, with getting the ultimate preamp design. And we've gone quite a long way to showing you a couple of designs that are as good as the best, if not better than some of the best, for not a lot of money. In a discussion I had with Ron this morning, he's pointed out that there is a chip which could be the ultimate for audio applications. It's an OPA 2891. Now, it's designed basically for video work, hence its suitability because it's got a super flat frequency response right up into the ionosphere. <laughs> I know that that's not strictly the, the criteria that it should, the frequency response should go extremely high, but where it excels primarily is in its slew rate, i.e. the speed of operation. Because a chip that's slow, like some of the older chips, lack detail simply because they can't rise and fall to instantaneous signals or transients and things like that. That's why they're often described as having a soft sound. To me, that sounds like coloured sound. And if you like coloured sound that's slow and pleasing in the ear, then fine. Both Ron and myself want accuracy and you can only get that with speed. Why don't we just drop this chip into the socket and all will be wonderful. If only that were true. One of the pro biggest problems is of course that it is surface mount only. It's not available in the standard form so it has to be soldered on to the PCB. That makes it a little bit harder to experiment with and to actually utilize in real terms. There's reasons for this which I'll tell you about in a moment. If you look at this graph you'll see the specifications for three or four of the most well-known chips for audio work starting off at the top LM358 which by today's standards is an appalling chip I mean I wouldn't even dream of using it just look at the spec it's slower than slow a rise time of about 25 minutes so clearly not one we we put it in the spec just to show you what is or what was used in the past and then some specs of some of the current ones which we're very pleased with. But then if you look at the bottom of the graph you can see this new chip. I think it's probably not practical to use it. One of the main issues with it because it is super, super fast, as you'd expect for video work, you, you need a very fast rise time for video or the picture will be poor. You can see the maximum load capacitance wise that you could put on the output in this chip is 20 picofarad. In all honesty, you can probably get more capacitance on a one meter standard output cable which would lead to your amplifier. Now if you exceed that of course you instantly destroy the slew rate which is what it's all about. Anything you gain you would have lost in one meter of cable. It's not a case of oh well I'll buy audiophile cables. In actual fact some audiophile cables because of the way they're constructed actually have a higher capacitance than a standard, if you like, run-of-the-mill one meter phono to phono or RCA to RCA if you prefer. Instantly comes to mind you think, ah, we'll put a buffer stage on the output at, at 
low impedance. Well, impedance isn't the problem in this. The impedance can be low, but it's the capacitance. 10 picofarad is a very, very small capacitance. I don't know what the answer is to that, because if you put a buffer stage on it, inherently the buffer stage will have a porous slew rate and a poorer specification than this I see. So clearly you're destroying what you've just gained by putting a buffer stage on it. So you can't, you can't do that. So how these forums are suggesting you just drop these in, I suggest there are probably people that haven't really thought about it too, too much. They've looked at the spec and thought, oh, put one of these in. And then you, there's comments that because it's a soldered, uh, it, you can't just drop it into a socket. You can buy these adapter boards. Well, you're opening a can of worms there as well. Because fair enough, you can put it on, a, uh, on one of these adapter boards. But there again, the output of these has got to go down. And then you're probably going to, again, exceed the 20 picofarad. The problems start, although it's pin for pin compatible, it's if you just drop it straight into well you can't even drop it straight in because it's only available as a surface mount one of the reasons why this chip could be particularly good for audio at a high specification is because its original design was for video work in its very nature it has to be fast in other words the slew rate must be unbelievably fast to deal with the frequencies and complexities of a video signal makes it absolutely perfect from an audio point of view. To finish off this video, I'm going to show you a couple of uh, displays off the oscilloscope showing the various square wave performances of some of these chips. Let's have a look at these graphs. And I'm, I've included the the LM358, just for giggles really, because you, you need to see an old chip to appreciate how good the new ones are. Now I should point out that the oscilloscope is fixed for this particular application, so we haven't changed any of the settings or anything like that, and the board that the chips are being dropped into is one that we're experimenting with and we'll have some results of this to be a super super duper preamp but at the moment i'm not releasing any details except there's the circuit whoops can't show you any more than that still experimental but that's what we're using to provide these numbers first oscilloscope capture is the LM358. Slow as hell. Absolutely useless for modern audio. The second one is the very well known and liked NE5532. Bear in mind the display is quite stretched out to give you as much detail as possible. There is a tiny bit of overshoot there. All these are done by the way with 10 kilohertz square waves. The final shot is our current favorite, the LME 49720. No overshoot, very fast rise time. That's the end of this quick little video. I'm only sorry that we can't come up with a circuit diagram or a little PCB for using this rather special I see. Maybe one day. But in the meantime, stick with what we know. Thank you for watching.